hi everybody i'm nick this is drew i wish you could see him right now because he's got a stash it's a it's a glorious stash it is a glorious stash you can't grow any other facial hair so you decided to put a stash on your on your lip huh no actually i had like a really solid like pirate frank zappa look going oh really um and, and you shaved it off and applied it above your nose <laughs> below your nose <laughs> did you super glue it above your lip i'm gonna kill you <laughs> I'm gonna come to your house and I'm gonna murder you in your sleep. People aren't gonna what? see you and hear me. That's true, but they can imagine it. Hey, I mean, I look like a a, a drunkard lumberjack right now. So we're we're trying something new out here. We're gonna. Uh, do you want to explain this this concept? Okay, so I had an idea. We could call it what the kids are watching. Basically, okay. I wanted to have an excuse to make bullshit videos was with Nick, um, but also realizing that he has a four-year-old to take care of in the house and knowing that maybe like you couldn't be watching random shitty movies all the time. So I figured why not just watch the shitty movies his kid is already watching and talk about those. That's great. And uh, initially I tried to get you hooked on Space Buddies, but that's not available on Netflix anymore. I have, I have Thank a, you. Like I have a quick question about Space Buddies. Sure. Is that part of the extended Airbud universe? Yes. Okay, so like Airbud, like a movie about a dog that plays basketball. Yes. Morphed into a series of straight to DVD movies. Pretty much. Yes. Yes. And and what's worse is that they're fran it's franchise. So every story is it's not serial in any way, shape, or form. Every story occurs in its own basic universe with the same set of buddies and the same set of kids. Well, not they're always different kids. That's the kicker. Same set of puppies. Five puppies with distinct personalities, and they all have kid owners who are similar but they never stay the same. Are they CGI or are they actual puppies? They're actual puppies with CGI mouth move. So what you're telling me is that you, we've got like a Tiger King situation here, where yeah. they're like just like butchering puppies off screen. No, uh, they're, not butchering. <laughs> they're not butchering. The Buddy series has a body count, is what I'm saying. The Buddy franchise is, is just not available to us at this time. So I got hooked on another franchise, the Barbie franchise. Hook uh, is a really generous term. I forced him to watch Barbie Dolphin Magic. Before we actually start talking about our impressions of Barbie Dolphin Magic, uh, I'm going to run down the plot as fast as I possibly can, as is provided there to us by... There was a plot? There's a plot, yes. Did you watch it? There's a plot. I... Mm. This is the plot. Isla, a mermaid, is swimming with gemstone dolphins when a green gemstone dolphin named Emerald is captured. Heartbroken about its capture, wait, 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 Isla wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up. What? For the record, they look like Lisa Frank, Lunchbox, the dolphin. They're, they're neon dolphins, essentially. That's what they are. They're neon dolphins with, like, okay, little markings like on them. Bright pastel. Bright pastel dolphins. And, yes, they have markings on them. And when they get captured, apparently the, the, the markings disappear. Like, the, the, the markings of the dolphins, they look like a henna tattoo. They, they look like, yeah, like a golden henna tattoo on a, on a pastel dolphin. Like you would normally see in nature. Uh, heartbroken about its capture, Isla vows to go find him and told the other dolphins to stay. Meanwhile, Barbie, her sisters, and their puppies arrive at their cabin at a tropical resort. They stay there while they visit Ken during his marine biology internship as a research assistant to Marlo. Like, I, I know you want to get through plots of... <laughs> no, talk about the plot as we go through, dude. That's fine. Like, what is the family dynamic here? There are no parents in this universe. No, there's no parents. It's Barbie, who I, I would assume is, uh, I guess, the eldest sibling who is old enough to be their guardian. I go as young as probably like seven or eight. I, yeah, yeah. The youngest girl is about seven or eight, yeah. There is a seven-year-old whose mother and father are dead, presumably. It could be, or they're just neglecting them and saying, hey, you know what? We don't have time for you. Why don't you go off to this island resort and go visit Ken? That's a nicer way of looking at it. I mean, if they're like trust fund kids. If you've seen the resort in this video, they are trust fund kids. They've got to be. That's the only way they could go. And we'll get into Ken later, but <laughs> the marine biology internship. Right. Yes. While living at a resort? I don't think that Ken is living at the resort. I think Ken is nearby at the marine biology lab. And he's probably living in, uh, you know, the servant hut or something like that. Okay, but like the lab is like part of the resort. Like it's... No, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's separate. It's like they're on the same island. You have the lab on the island, you have the resort on the island. They like walk there. Too close is what I'm saying. 
Well, yeah, too close. But at the same time, though, I mean, if you ever played, you know, Dead Island, it's the same, it's the same idea, same concept. On Dead Island, there's a secret prison on the island <laughs> right next to the resort. Then you have a bunch of zombies. Okay. That's, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, actually, because I, uh... <laughs> Watching this after watching Dead Island playthroughs and Hitman playthroughs, I kept sitting there going, "This is weird." The Hitman Island, exactly, exactly. So they're there with their puppies, all the sisters, Barbie being the eldest sibling guardian. And what's important is that Ken is on his marine biology internship as a research assistant to Marlo. Barbie, Skipper, and Ken go diving, and Skipper takes an unclear photo of Isla, okay, as a mermaid. Isla finds Emerald in captivity, but leaves when Barbie, Skipper, and Ken arrive at the facility. Stacy and Chelsea and the puppies also arrive. Ken tells Barbie and Skipper about the myth of the gemstone dolphins and says that Emerald is in a pool for sick and injured animals to be re rehabilitated. Emerald looks fine, so Barbie thinks that he got into the facility by mistake. Barbie tries to free Emerald, but Marlo stops her. How shitty is the security at this facility if an entire family can wander in and just well, well, Ken Ken does work there, dude. I mean, it's, I mean he probably let them in because you know it's hey, mermaids uh, shows up like ass random. Yeah, well, I don't think they're expecting mermaids at this point. They don't know about mermaids at this point. They're about to find out about mermaids, but not yet. All we know is that Emerald has been caught by some unknown force, and now Emerald's popped up in this marine biology pool. Ken asks Marlo if Emerald is a gemstone dolphin, but Marlo says that they are just a myth. Isla transforms her tail into legs and tries to release Emerald, but Barbie stops her. Wait, Isla can we talk says, about this a second? Sure. Oh, sure. She's got this little shell thing on her neck. Right, and that's how she transforms. And immediately goes from fins to legs. She touches it and it glows and then her fins go away and her, her legs pop up. Where do the clothes come into this? I don't know, maybe it's part of the transformation process. She's suddenly fully clothed. Well, you know, maybe it's a hologram. Maybe she's actually really naked, but there's a the, the, the magic from the, the seashell provides a hologram of, of clothes. I don't know, it's magic. Okay, it's magic. Isla says that Emerald is a gemstone dolphin. She tells Barbie not to tell Marlo about the gemstone dolphins and agrees to wait until a vet checks Emerald the following morning because Barbie's like, oh, he must be in the pool, so he must be sick. Marlo calls the vet, Hugo, and asks him to come tomorrow morning instead of the afternoon. She tells Emerald that he is going to make her a lot of money. She's the only one at this research facility. She's the, she is the lead scientist at the research facility. There, as far as I know, there's only two people. It's Marlo and Ken. Exactly. So she's the only one there. She's really the only one there. It's it's more like, I wouldn't say it's a, you know what? I would say this is like a research outpost. I would not call this a, like a complete research facility. That's the impression I get. Like whenever I played Mass Effect, you know, they have, they have the scientific outpost and everything. I always, you know, that that's how I took this is that, you know, it, it's, and also it's streamlining the plot. There's not a bunch of other scientists. It's just Marlo and Ken. That's that's the that's the concept. And Marlo is not about studying gemstone dolphins. She wants to sell off emeralds to make a lot of money. That's pretty clear right off the bat. Also, from her like, no one's checking up on her. Really? No, no one's checking up on her. She's. Why doesn't she lead. just monetize the dolphin? Well, we are going to find out about how she's going to monetize this do off the dolphin here. But for the time being, she's under under the guise of taking care of the dolphin. She is just keeping him captured until Hugo can show up to take the dolphin. We that that's pretty well understood. Well, you know she's evil. Yeah, she's evil okay. under the guise of science. This movie is a lot of lessons. She's greedy. She's tired of studying starfish. And she's tired of studying crabs and all the other fun stuff. And she's got her hands on a gemstone dolphin. She wants to make some money. Meanwhile, Barbie and her, her sisters Ken and Isla go to a buffet. And Skipper takes a group photo. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Not a buffet. A sandwich bar. It's a sandwich bar. Yes, there's the sandwich bar. And then there's a buffet later. This movie was paid for by Big Sandwich. By Kraft and Hellman's Mayo. That, that, that's no, 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 no. Just, just by the entity that is the sandwich. That is the sandwich. Big sandwich. It's big sandwich. That's big sandwich. So they, they take a group photo. Uh, there's also a musical thing that they don't talk about here, but, you know, we'll leave that alone. Uh, the next morning, Isla and Barbie go swimming, and one of the gemstone dolphins touches Isla's necklace, transforming her back into a mermaid. Totally just glossed over the entire sleepover scene. Yeah, because what they don't say about this in the plot recap here is that Isla's lied and told them that she's from a distant island somewhere. 
and she's sleeping on the beach, and they're like, no, no, sleep with us! And they have, like, a sleepover party, but then Isla, like, passes out the moment she lays down on the bed for the first time. Are we to believe that this mermaid, who can transport herself into a human whenever she wants, has never thought, hey, why don't I check out what a bed's like? I, 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 I really want I really want to find out what this having like things is about. Just chill out from the dolphins for a couple days. Never did that. I don't know. I have no clue. It's a pretty small cabin for, was it, four young ladies with a fifth and a bunch of puppies? Is it four or five? I think it's four. There's, there's Barbie. Barbie. There's the one with, the, with the game foot. Yeah, that's uh, Stacy, I think. The nerd. That's uh, Skipper. Let's take photos. And then Chelsea. Little one. Okay, four. Yeah, there's four. And then and Ken, who doesn't have a gender. He's got a gender. Ken is astonishingly asexual. All of the women have, at least Barbie, has like feminine traits. Like, yeah. He is as unremarkable and intimidating as humanly possible. Nothing about him suggests he's an adult. Well, I, I would put him somewhere in, uh, uh, God, I'd put him somewhere in uh, the, 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 the early 20s range, possibly. I guess, I, like, he just, there's nothing to him. But I think that's the point, too, because it's not really about Ken. That's the interesting thing about this 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 movie is that it's really female driven. Your villain is the female. Your heroes are the female. Your 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 protagonist, your antagonist, and Ken is kind of he's like that guy. <laughs> yeah. He serves a purpose, but not too much. I guess it's like there's relationship between he and Barbie makes no sense. Well, they're really good friends. Yeah, there is no romantic relationship between Ken and Barbie in this. Hasn't that historically been Barbie relationship? No, that's a great that's a great point. But yeah, if you watch any more of the Barbie videos, uh, Ken is not always a guaranteed to be one of the characters in the video. There's always uh, there's always a, like a token male that's kind of a relationship foil to Barbie, but not really. There is no really romantic involvement between her and any of the male characters. Like, I'm trying to put my finger on what bothers me about Ken, is that, like, his character isn't even loosely based in reality. But you're, you're going off of the Ken you remember growing up. They've changed Ken since then. I don't know. It's like, that character shouldn't have been Ken. It should have been another friend of Barbie's. Like, this guy's supposed to be a part of the Barbie... Universe. So what is okay? So l l let me ask you this, because you're obviously not somebody who's played with Barbie, right? A lot, right? No, not really. Okay, so we have a conception from us growing up that Ken was Barbie's boyfriend. That being said, though, that was us growing up. That was like a that's you know let's be honest, it was a generation ago. <laughs> They've changed it. It's completely different now. I, I wanted like some acknowledgement. I don't know. It's weird. So let me get this straight. You wanted a relationship between Barbie and Ken. I wanted... Maybe this is just, like, comeuppance, because this is normally reserved for female characters. Okay. There is no development of Ken's character. Very true. He's, he's bad comic relief. He's very bad like, comic relief. Didn't, they didn't even, like, develop him as, like, a best friend type. He just kind of shows up every once in a while then leaves. No, you're right. He's he, a, a, As a support character, Ken in this video is extremely ineffectual. He serves a plot purpose, which we haven't gotten to yet, where he distracts Marlo at some point. But that's really what he does. And then he drives the boat at the end. That's about it. That's really all Ken provides. Like, there's, there's no reason for him to be in this movie. I think his purpose is to be the connection to the marine biology outpost. So that, one, you kind of have an explanation as to why Barbie and the sisters are there. And then, two, you have a reason as to how Barbie and the sisters can actually see the dolphin at the, at the outpost. The dogs run away and lead them to the thing. It's just... that That's true. That's very, very true. It could have been the dogs. It could have been the dogs. I think Ken serves as an easier plot device. Not to mention, while Ken is probably changed culturally in terms of who he is in relationship to Barbie from when we grew up, He's still Ken. I guess they were saying, we got to pop Ken in here somewhere. He's not. Okay, here's my question. You keep saying he's not. So what is Ken supposed to be? 
there needs to be some sort of purpose to his character outside of serving as a plot device. This person's supposed to be the second most recognizable person in the Barbie universe. I don't care if his whole plot point is that he realizes that he doesn't really want to be a marine biologist, or realizes that this person screwed him over and he learned a lesson about something, or he should have been taking better care of his friends, little sisters, whatever. Like, there's no development. No, in that, in that one regard, I do completely agree with you. As a character that is literally caught between a rock, between the rock and the hard place of working for Marlo and then being Barbie's friend, when it becomes clear what Marlo's intentions are, he goes with Barbie, but there is no decision on his part. He just does it. And he actually screws it up initially because he's he doesn't very understand. Very stupid. That is yeah. a defining character trait. Is he stupid? Yeah. Yeah, he's stupid. But again, I don't think... Here's here's what's interesting to me, because I have a four-year-old son who loves watching this movie, okay? And for his point of view, it's not really about male or female or Ken or Barbie or previous relationships or character plot. But I guess what amazes me is, from a father's point of view, it's all about the women in this. And it's like they've, they've made Ken sort of that horrible support character that you see in all movies where they take a demographic and make them the friend. At the same time, I, I, I don't think my four-year-old would understand the internal conflict of being torn between his internship at the Marine Biology Cal Post and at the same time, you know, his, his devotion towards Barbie and what might be right when it comes to dealing with life forms that haven't been discovered yet. Give Brennan like two years. What's the age range for this movie? That, I've been trying to look that up as we've been talking here, and it doesn't really say too much. I imagine uh, anything from like probably two to eleven. Two to eleven? Yeah, that that would be about right. I, I can see like like nine year old me getting into this. Like when I was a kid, my sister loved Rainbow Bright. We watched the fuck out of that. That had more of a plot, but here's my question: Did it? Well, at least with that, that show, what I can remember of it, it had a very specific universe with two dedicated baddies. Clear-cut heroine and all of her, like, magical support cast. And so, like, every episode was based around sort of the pinky in the brain, how we're going to try and take over the world thing. Then each episode, they try a different way. It was a very set narrative. Whereas it seems to me like these movies are all just kind of one and dones. Some of the characters stay the same. Right, we're not talking about the Barbie series here, because actually the Barbie series or franchise, we'll just call it the franchise because it's not a series, but every every movie that you see Barbie in, she's somebody different. And the characters around her are different. Sometimes you, you'll see similar characters, sometimes you won't, but they're, they're always different relations to her or they have a different skill set or background or stuff like that. I think, based off of some of the promo material that I've seen prior to watching the movies, is that it's designed to show that Barbie can be anything and thereby making the child think the same way, that I could be anything. It sort of takes that concept of, I'm going to play with my dolls now and this is the circumstance I'm going to put the dolls under and then plays it out on their own. But... In all fairness, just so you know, this is the 36th Barbie film. You gotta make that money. Exactly. Mattel's getting paid. And it's the it's the first ever Netflix exclusive Barbie special, so you can watch this on Netflix. So we left off, where did we leave off here? We went to the sandwich bar, big sandwich, that's right, okay. The next morning, Isla and Barbie go swimming, and one of the gemstone dolphins touches Isla's necklace, transforming her back into a mermaid. Isla tells Barbie to keep it a secret. Skipper and Stacy see Hugo arrive by helicopter and go tell Barbie that they can say bye to Emerald. Isla and Barbie wonder why they hear Emerald even though they're far from the cove. And Isla finds a cave with confusing tunnels that lead to Emerald. Barbie's sisters overhear Marlo telling Hugo to transport Emerald to a mainland facility as soon as possible. Skipper realizes her photo of Isla is a photo of a mermaid and she sees a photo of the logo of Hugo's helicopter. The gemstone dolphins find Emerald, and Ken opens the gate for them. Really solid camera. It is a solid camera. It's an iPad, isn't it? Take the iPad underwater? I think so. I could be wrong, but I, I want to say that it's an iPad. No, um, they played with an iPad at one point. Yeah, I just remember that all of her photos and stuff, because Skipper is actually using this time to try to apply to a, a blogging contest. Yeah, she's excited because the picture of the, of the mermaid is going to win her the, the contest. They don't bring this up in the overview either. 
Fast hurts. The gemstone dolphins find Emerald and Ken opens the gate for them. Marlo orders him to capture the dolphins. Marlo leaves and Isla and Barbie, because yeah, Ken closes the gate and then captures all the dolphins. Marlo leaves and Isla and Barbie find the dolphins. Ken tries to free them, but the code to open the gate has changed. Isla no longer trusts Barbie. I don't know. What? I guess this is part of Ken's defining trait, just being him being a fucking moron. <laughs> Start out with, he lets the dolphins into the enclosure. Yep. Knowing this is a bad thing, he obeys his boss and closes it back on them. And then, Ch when he tries to reopen it, they change the password because he puts in the wrong password three times. No, no, she's already changed the password. I'm almost confident that he puts in the wrong one three times and then says you can't try again. Really? I, I thought it, I thought it was the right one, but she had changed it. She'd already changed the password. That's later on. I think she changes it twice. I think Marlo's that devious. Don't get me wrong, though. I still think that, that Ken think, is an idiot. I think he's that stupid. To slightly defend Ken here on this, if I remember correctly, they start to have the gate go up because the dolphins are inside and Ken's opened it because Barbie's asked him to and that he's not sick. The dolphins are now inside, or maybe Ken has a razor, but all I remember is that Marlo yells to Ken that he's got to close the gates. And I will defend Ken on this one point. It's a job. He's an intern. He's being told what to do. He's trusting the scientist. And the scientist is telling him to close the gate. He doesn't know that Marlo is operating off of greed and has, is there is no scientific merit behind her desire to close the gate. He just has been given an order and the gate must be closed. Little oh, Patsy. <laughs> Isla no longer trusts Barbie because Barbie told her sisters. And, Snoopy uh, is also really, like, explicitly anti-snitching. I think Barbie makes her point. She says to her and says, you know, they're my family. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell my family. I don't know about that. By the way, Barbie does concede at the very, very end. She, she apologizes to, to Isla for putting her all, through all that. Hold on just one second. Yes, buddy. Um, we're making the best dinner ever. You're making the best dinner ever? Um, you have to try it. Okay, I'll be up soon. Can you do me a favor? Can you close the door, baby? Yeah. That would be great. What do you think of, uh, while you're here, while you're here, real fast, what do you think of uh, Barbie Dalton Magic? You don't know? You've only watched it like 15 times. So what do you think of Barbie Dolphin Magic? Um, um, I still don't know. You still don't know? Okay. I mean, Barbie does apologize to Isla. I'm seeing it right here on, on the plot. Barbie apologizes to Isla and Isla agrees to help. I'm not saying that it's anti-snitching. I think it rides the fence, personally. I have seen other Barbie films with my son and there does tend to be an overall theme involved. And there's not really one in this, ep uh, in this particular film. The closest things to themes in this film are the Godfather, it stays within the family theme. Will anyone else on the outside know, or else bad things will happen. And also that science is bad. I disagree with you there. Because when I texted you about this and I asked you about Marlo, you said, oh, the evil scientist lady. <laughs> yeah. No, I think Marlo is corrupt. I don't think the movie is trying to make a connection between Marlo being a scientist and Marlo being a bad person. There's an easy way to fix that. How, okay, how would you fix it? You have two people at the research institute that, besides Ken. So maybe you have like a bumbling but well-meaning scientist and then evil Marlo. And then That's a good point. At the end, bumbling but well-meaning scientist finds out, oh, you did this horrible thing. You're fired. And the, she gets her comeuppance and the good scientist stays. That's a good point. I agree with you there. I agree She's with you. the only representative for any sort of scientific community in the entire movie. Then you have Ken, but Ken is is one an intern, and two, yeah. we've all we both agree he's he's an idiot. All right, so now at this point, all of the dolphins are trapped behind the cage in the pool. Isla's ticked off at Barbie because she thinks that Barbie told everybody. Barbie admits that she's told her sisters, but Barbie hasn't told everybody else. Marlo at this point does not know that Isla is a mermaid. After trying the code again, a new code is sent to Marlo's master device. So maybe you're right. Maybe Ken did screw up. He, no. He I think he screwed up. Okay, a new code is sent to Marlo's master device. Barbie tells Ken and the puppies to distract Marlo while Chelsea, because there's this big sp spy scene with Ken acting stupid again, with them trying to steal the the device so they can so Skipper can upload the code. Barbie tells Ken and the puppies to distract Marlo while Chelsea gives the master device to Stacy and Skipper. Skipper syncs the device to her tablet and downloads the new passcode. Barbie apologizes to Isla. Isla agrees to help. Isla reveals to everyone that she is a mermaid and she gets in the pool with the gemstone dolphins. Marlo arrives and says she reprogrammed the master device so the new passcode fails. Isla and the dolphins hide in the tunnel so Barbie says they escaped. So it's the old, y'all, they've already escaped ploy. 
Marlon and Hugo go to his helicopter to find Isla and the dolphins. Isla gives Barbie a shell that emits a signal and tells Barbie to go to the other end of the tunnels and guide them through. Marlo and Hugo see them escaping and pursue them. Barbie and Isla part ways, and Barbie gets caught in Isla's place. She she wraps herself in seaweed to make her look like a, like a mermaid. At this point, Marla sees Isla as a mermaid and decides to go after Isla instead of the dolphins uh, during this chase sequence. Barbie, tell, Barbie tells Marlo that a real marine biologist would use Research Center to help animals not exploit them. Hugo leaves in a helicopter, and Isla leaves with the dolphins. Skipper deletes her photo of Isla as a mermaid. Barbie and Skipper agree that the group selfie is the best photo from the trip, and Barbie reunites with Isla after using the shell that Isla gave her. End of story. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah, there is a lot to talk about. <laughs> the last 25 minutes of the movie. I want to give credit where credit's due. The scene with the syncing up the phone to the tablet, solid. It's your standard misdirection spy movie scene. It shows all the young girls as being really competent and tech savvy. It's great. And Ken's idiocy gets used to effect. Exactly. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a useful bumbling idiot. The thing that I don't understand in this entire movie, and yes, it's a framing device, but tunnels. How could they not fit? Like, dolphins have sonar. All you would need is someone making noise at the other end of the tunnel. Then they'd be able to find their way through. Very, very true. There, there is something that's not brought up in the, this plot explanation that Barbie and Isla have a conversation about the dolphins. And Barbie says to Isla, well, aren't they supposed to be like, you know, aren't are they like your intellectual equivalents? And Isla says, no, they're more like your puppies are to you. I think that's the movie's way of explaining why the dolphins don't think for themselves. <laughs> dolphins are really smart. Dude, I am not, I am not arguing about the, the, the factual uh, depiction of dolphins in this movie. I'm just saying I think that's how they used it as the plot to explain why the dolphins are sort of helplessly captive behind this cage and don't yeah. figure out the, the the tunnels for themselves. Not to mention, the other thing that is not brought up in this is they try to use the tunnels at one point and they get lost on their own. It makes sense as like the power of friendship unites us type thing, right? Yeah. So only through these two women connecting, they succeed. Yeah. Here's something interesting, because we talk about Ken and Ken's, Ken's role as we remember him, but I would actually argue that if there was, I mean, it's definitely friendship. This is definitely a platonic relationship between the two of them, but I would say that there is a really strong relationship between Barbie and Isla and an attraction between those two characters that is much stronger than Ken could ever be. You're talking like just platonically? Platonically. That makes sense. But I think that's also just because Isla is inherently more interesting. Very true. <laughs> she has things to say. <laughs> I want to be your friend. You know what? I, I would go as far as to say, here I am trying to talk to the webcam and the webcam is not even being, being used. This is what I would say is there's an intimacy between Barbie and Isla that is not, yeah, it just, I mean, Barbie refers to Ken as being like best friends from long time, but there is definitely not an, a sense of intimacy between Barbie and Ken. There's definitely intimacy between Barbie and Isla. Which is really weird because they literally meet for the first time in this movie. Yes. Very true. Well, I mean, the last moment, the last moment is they're now back at Malibu with all the family and Barbie has tried multiple times to call out to Isla with the shell that she still has. And she's, she's pretty much about given up when Isla shows up on the beach and there's that sense of, oh my God, you're here. So there is this weird kind of romantic comedy ending to it, but on a friendship level, So you know? There's an alternate theory for the entire Barbie universe. Basically Logan's run. That's the reason why there are no adults anywhere. <laughs> At a certain point, you just get sent to Carousel and retired. You know, the one thing we haven't talked about is the crab. You know what? Like, that's a solid crab. Really? A solid movie crab. And, like, imagine Hermit Crab as done by a Pixar reject. <laughs> it's got some funny bags. Hides underneath the coconut at one point. Like, it's... It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely a, a Pixar grab on this crab. There's the, just so you understand, there's this crab <laughs> that does nothing in the movie but snatch things. But it doesn't tie in with the plot in any way, shape, or form. And I think at the end, the crab winds up on the beach in Malibu. I don't even, I don't even explain how he gets there. I guarantee you that the crab is the favorite character of at least 25% of kids that watch this. Yeah, that's very true. I would actually like you to watch a couple of the other Barbies. There's Barbie Starlight something. Um, oh, we're, we're taking a break. 
<laughs> you want a different movie next? Oh, okay. I will, Wait, come, but, uh, I will come back to Barbie. That's fine. Okay. Okay. The I'm curious about the entire Barbie oeuvre. <laughs> well, there's a whole bunch of them, and they they vary in terms of complexity and value, in my opinion. I mean, my son, Bar just so you know, from, from my four-year-old's point of view, Barbie Dolphin Magic is the go-to. That's the Citizen Kane of Barbie movies for Lil B. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It, yeah. it is the it is the Star Wars of the Barbie movies. But Barbie Starlight Adventure, in my opinion, has got more merit. <laughs> and Video Game Hero has got my actual interest versus the two. But those are the two that he doesn't he doesn't like to go to. So you you've watched a movie that I watch with Brennan on the regular. Is there a movie that you think that we should watch? Wonder Park. Wonder Park. Basically, I don't know the entire plot. But Basically, it's like a bunch of animals and a human protagonist child have a theme park. Something happens. That's okay. This is, like it got pretty bad reviews, but like I'm sure Brennan will love it. Sounds great. Okay, so that's what we'll do. So just to wrap up, I'll tell you what? How about we rate the movie real fast? One from uh, somebody who doesn't have kids' perspective, as if you know this would be something would you pay money to go see. <laughs> Or actually invest time on your own to watch. Uh, and then one from a parent's perspective. How about that? Okay. On a scale from one hermit crab to five hermit crabs, how many hermit crabs would you assign this movie? From my standpoint, it, like from an adult standpoint with no kids, it is a solid one. There's no reason to watch this because it's not designed for adults. As far as like a for kids goes, I mean, I'd probably give it like a, like a three and a half. Female protagonists friendship narrative funny crab the only big downsides to this were the ugly anti green biologist message well a real man green biologist says blah, 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 blah. at the end it's like no 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 kids aren't listening to that the kid is already internalized message the marine biologist is the villain outside of that i've clearly talked too much about ken <laughs> you this is my you know patriarchal comeuppance i guess i don't know but like completely useless Ken is completely useless. I agree with you. If I were to rate it, I would definitely give it one hermit crab as an adult. I'd have to be like suffering from day three of insomnia and would have to just be trying to find something to make me fall asleep. But as a parent, I gotta give it four, four hermit crabs. I've got utmost respect for strong female characters, a strong intimate bond between two female characters, a break against the expected social norm of Ken. I don't have so much of a problem with Ken being this bumbling idiot. Although I guess I will concede. I haven't thought to have that conversation with my son that if he's relating the scientist as being bad because she's a scientist as opposed to she's a scientist who happens to be bad. There's a parallel here. Captain Planet, the female villain in that is, works for like a petrochemical company, I think, or something like that. There's like a foil. It shows you what like the good environmentalist is like. Yeah, there is no foil for her. Uh, well, Ken is supposed to be our foil, but he's, you're right, he's so vapid that there's just no way for that to be possible. That getting the code scene is really, really good. Uh, it's got a, a great little twist at the end of did Isla get caught or did Isla not get caught? And again, I think it shows kids uh, strong female characters and breaks the mold in terms of what should be expected in a story. Yeah, I give it four. Dude, it's great talking to you, man. This is good. Can't believe we actually had like an in-depth discussion on Barbie dolphin magic. I didn't anticipate my reasoning going down that road. Like, I guess I didn't realize how much. It's funny. I've been listening to a great podcast called Bechtelcast. It's basically like the Bechtel test. Yeah. So basically, it's the two women and like guest stars applying the Bechtel test as sort of a framework to look at various movies. The, I would say Barbie Dolphin Magic 100% passes the Bechdel test. Romance doesn't exist in the, this Barbie universe, so... No, it doesn't. D by Intimacy default. does. All right. Who knew All that right, we would get this in depth? Well, listen, dude, you have a great one. And uh, hey, everybody out there, thanks, thanks, and ever thanks for listening. I'm Nick. This is Drew. I look like a, a bad cartoon character that has been on what, a six-day bender, and <laughs> Drew looks like a 1980s porn star, so just get that in your head. I'll take, I'll take it. Dude, it was great talking to you. I'll, right, how man. about we do this again next week? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. All right. All right, man. Have a great one, everybody. Take care. <laughs>